Thank you all very much. And um, thank you very much, General McCaffrey. You know, for somebody like me, um, I am humbled. I think it ought to be the other way around. I ought to be introducing General McCaffrey. Uh, so I am incredibly honored to have you uh, bring me to the podium. The other person I want to thank is Jim Knotts. Uh, you, talk, you don't meet very many people with his persistence and tenacity. Uh, he has tried to get me to this event for a number of years. Uh, he never gave up, and I am so appreciative that he, that he did not give up. To my fellow Marines who are with us today, um, on the day after we celebrated the 241st anniversary of our Corps yesterday, Semper Fi. <laughs> to all the veterans who are with us, as well as all the active service men and women, thank you for your service. To all of you here in the audience, thank you for keeping the memory and the legacy alive of our heroes who are forever a part of this national mall and our national heritage and character. The heroes whose names are inscribed on this wall. There's great symbolism in the fact that we take time today recalling the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. We recall that time on that day when an armistice or a temporary cessation of hostilities was declared between Allied nations and Germany in the First World War, then known as the Great War. These 24 hours of historical observance has become one of the most important days in the life of our democracy. This has become a day when men and women from all walks of life line up in schoolhouses and libraries and senior centers and participate in local parades to celebrate the sacrifices of those who have chosen to serve our nation as members of a unique group of brothers and sisters in arms. As President Obama said in his remarks earlier this afternoon at the Arlington Cemetery, when the world around us would make us cynical, we can always look to the veterans to provide the example for true American spirit. Because of your sacrifices, a few days ago, we were able to exercise one of our most sacred rights, the right to vote, and then exercise the peaceful transition of power, something that sets us apart from almost every other nation in the world. This moving and inspirational wall before which we stand is one symbol and one segment of that unique group of veterans a group who chose to make the ultimate sacrifice that we might enjoy the unalienable rights of being citizens of these United States. The heroic men and women whose names are inscribed on this wall represent the best of our nation who left their homes in towns large and small to take up arms in a far off land that we might continue to live in freedom. They gave their lives so that all of us might continue to live in this freedom. They gave their lives not just for the present, but for the future, for their own children and grandchildren, and for millions of faces they would never see, millions of souls they would never meet, for future generations who would share with them the most sacred and important title anyone can have the privilege to hold, the title of American. Like so many of you, I have far too many friends, far too many brothers and sisters in arms whose names are etched on this wall. These names, more than 58,000 of them, are more than letters carved in stone. Each represents a soul. Each represents someone who was someone else's entire world. They represent husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, cousins, congregants, best friends, little league coaches, bowling partners, poker buddies, classmates, long lost loves, soulmates, mentors, scoutmasters, 
deacons, soldiers, sailors, airmen and women, Marines and Coast Guardmen and women, heroes all. Each of us has memories etched on this wall. All of our lives have been shaped by the ways in which these heroic men and women impacted our own lives. The poet John, John Greenleaf Whittier writes, and I quote, for all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest are these, it might have been, unquote. As we mourn for those we lost, we mourn as well for all that might have been, all the contributions they could have made. In this sense, Veterans Day is also a time to celebrate the many contributions that veterans make to our country today. Contributions that benefit our families and communities in every conceivable way. At NASA, we are some of the beneficiaries of veterans' continued service to community and country. So many of our astronauts and other members of our family are veterans and active service members. We are not alone. As I speak today, veterans are continuing to serve the greater good in every corner of our country. They are starting businesses and teaching students, training for charity runs and running charities, coaching at boys and girls clubs, and raising boys and girls of their own. They're working as doctors and engineers, and yes, as astronauts and cabinet secretaries and administrators, too. Their service is perhaps the highest tribute of all to the more than 58,000 lives we honor today by our presence at this hallowed wall. Lives that continue to matter today. Souls that we continue to hold dear and forever remain a part of us. May God bless their memory and may God bless our great United States of America.